Hey mages, welcome to today's budget meta deck video. Today I'm going to go through some decks that are performing so well on the ladder. They have really high percentages and they are great decks with fewer rares. Now, as we always know in this series, there I talk about what some of the top meta decks are about. And they will have anything from 25, 30, 35, 40 plus rares at some of those top meta decks. So I tend to look for decks that are still performing in high percentages, anything between 60 and 70% that will use a lot less rares. Um, so we have decks here today that have five rares. Uh, I think there's another one. Yeah, there's two with five rares, one with seven, one with nine, one with 12. And that is still super budget for a meta deck that is going to perform well for you on the ladder. So without further ado, let's get to the first deck today. And it has just the five rares. And this configuration is one that I've not seen before. I've seen um, this Poison Dimir deck around quite a bit. But this configuration has been knocking in the winds. Now, it has five rares, you know, mixture between Mythic and normal standard rares. Um, we'll have a look at those first. Majority are taken up by the lands. It has one Shipwreck Marsh and two Dark Slick Shores and one Mirex. Now, that is nice if you've just got, you know, not everyone's got four of these, four of these, four of these. Obviously, that's a good way to um, upgrade the deck is having four Dark Slicks and four Shipwreck Marshes and possibly another Mirex. Um, but this is good if you've literally just got a couple of these or one of these or just want to craft them because lands obviously make decks a lot more consistent but all these decks as they are i'm going to show you today have been performing as you know really well getting the percentages and the wins the other rare in the deck is of raska betrayal sting works very well with proliferate which is what this deck is all about um can come down as a five mana planeswalker pain to life as well or it comes down as six mana it is one of the um really you know fun new cards that came for phyrexia for me i do like big planeswalkers and um it works very well and proliferating is what this deck is all about as you can see there is an absolute plethora of two drops in this um, but we're going to take a look at the creatures first there's not too many as we can see from the stats of the deck it has a 2.2 cmc average then has 11 creatures and 29 non-creature spells that is huge so let's have a look at those creatures first skull dweller Death Touch, it is the one drop, can trade off with anything because it's got the Death Touch and it's Toxic 1. And if you've got it in your hand, it's a great opening turn 1 play. Followed up, I mean, we're talking about the creatures, but if you can get turn 2 Life of Toshin Umazawa, you can then potentially either kill a little pesky creature, minus 1, or give this a little bump up and give it a plus 2. Other creatures, it has a single Thrumming Bird. There's lots of one of, two of, um, it's, you know, it's a three of. It's a really um, brewed up, janky kind of combination of cards, and that's what I love. And um, obviously, it's putting test in because there was quite a few games played with this deck. Um, and this has, you know, proliferate, so it's going to work well with the deck as well. Then we have Blight Belly Rat. We need to get the Toxic T in, get the Poison Counter in. There's a lot of poison around. And while it's, you know, you've still only got to get 10 points of damage, it's going to be around for a long time. So if you can't beat them, you might as well join them, is my sort of, uh, you know, saying, as we say. When this dies, you get to proliferate a 2-2 two, two for 2 with Toxic 1 and then can help towards the cause as long as we've got that first Toxicity counter in there. Then the one that always likes to come back, the Void Wind Hybrid, 2-1 Flying Toxic 1. This is one of my best uncommons from this set when it came out. When you proliferate, turn it back to your hand and we have plenty of ways to proliferate in the deck so let's have a look at some of them experimental augury looking at your top three cards and then proliferating prologue to phariasis is really good because it gets that poison counter you might need to start off if your creatures are getting killed with all the mass removal that's in standard this literally if you can get this uncountered get it on get the poison counter and then draw your card then has a single Serum Snare, returning target non-land permanent. Better than Fading Hope, because um, for this deck anyway, because it works well in there. But you know, the person that puts it together only plays one of these, and then you get to proliferate as well with this. We also have a Knight with Affliction that works well if we've got those poison counters in there. Exile target creature if it's manually value three or less. Exile that creature instead if opponent has three or more poison counters, which is good. For two mana, that is really strong as long as we got the poison counters going or we will be using it to get rid of an early creature 
We then have two uh, foot two drowning anchor minus four four is sorcery speed, but minus four four will hit a lot of creatures. Unfortunately, not Sheldred, uh, but then proliferate and then get that in there. We don't have to worry about that too much. Um, we use our life as a resource in this deck, and we just need to get the first poison counter on. And then what does deal with um, cards like that? Well, it stops them from attacking. Is mesmerizing dose. Uh, tap the entire trigger then you get to proliferate and it doesn't untap so anything that's big bad maybe an attraction stuff that has vigilance that's just always gonna you know really do big damage to you if you you know you haven't killed your opponents off before they've managed to cheat that attraction into play then this is another good card to proliferate along with reject imperfection can target spells, mana vela, three or less, which is the stipulation, it seems, with some of these really good cards. Uh, then we get to proliferate the um, mana value, three or less, to get that proliferation kind of infect that we want to do. We also have an infectious inquiry, draw two cards, lose two life, but it does give the opponent the poison counter. And sometimes in when you're playing like black card draw, you will have a, like a stipulation where it do you a bit of damage. It's always been that sort of way recently, um, but this is another way, three mana, get a poison counter on so it could be still a winning card and what you need maybe is that potential one more poison counter and then you've got a way like product of Phoresis and this just to get that poison counter in Fraska's full instant each opponent sacks a creature or planeswalker if they get this down you know puts in their turn three planeswalker and we've got this held up get them sacrificing it and then another way to get a poison counter land base pretty simple in this um lots of basics 14 basics and the rares like i said are in the dark stick shores the shipwreck marsh warfare district is good for drawing a card nice budget card that one and then mirics that can pay three and make a phyrexian mine which is really good for you know you really would like to upgrade this if you can um having two it can only make the deck better uh, but this is what's getting the wins at the moment um, did I mention, I think I did mention the Anoint with Affliction, that's the Exile card, just going over, I thought I didn't, um, the one I didn't mention was Bring the Ending, which is a counter spell, controller page 2, but we counter that spell instead for 2 mana if they've got 3 poison counters, which you can see is pretty easy to do in this deck. It's an aggressive aggro kind of control deck uh, that I, you know, this is it does, it does uh, play like a control deck when I've tested this one myself. Um, and it just seems like the odd number of cards, you know, the twos and the ones and everything, it just seems to work together. It's really strange. Um, I know a lot of decks when people are building just go four, 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 but this really does. You've got like your plethora of so many different types of cards, and uh, maybe sometimes it might not work out for you, but for me, this is getting a good percentage between the 60s and 70% this was getting. And um, yeah, I think for a budget deck with just five cards on the meta, you definitely have some luck with this deck. Now, the most played deck is always mono red on the ladder. Always is. Um, but I've got two versions of you. This is a five, uh, five rare version, and I've got a nine rare version. So this gives you two different options. They play different cards, uh, new configurations of the deck. Uh, this one, for me, um, plays a card that I've never seen play before, but it's getting the wins. Uh, Voltaic Visionary. Maybe you've seen a lot, but I've never really come against this one. Uh, but when I was searching out for decks with you know low rares and high wins, this was the one um, so this is a 3-1 it deals two damage to you do a bit of pain but then you may play a card that you exile from the top of your library that turn when you play a card exile with it you get to transform it into a 4-3 attacking creature that can't block so it is a really sweet card and, a, and you know definitely a different addition to the mono red deck now the rares in this we have five and they're right here they're three squeeze um very good aggressive creature that can be played from the graveyard by exiling cards as well and then we have chandra that i'm i'm really liking in the mono red decks you know putting this down because uh, it has so many one drops you can put this down when you turn three do the plus one do the one damage and then potentially play any number you know any one of these kumanu is in a, you know really good aggressive turn one play coming down then hopefully getting the creature down turn two to come in with a counter like phoenix um, also runs four rabbit battery in this one um, and it runs two saw blade scam now what you're noticing from this kind of mono red version it has no monetary swiss bear which seems very strange to me um, but this deck has been winning and it, it's going for the rabbit battery instead now you do fire with monetary swiss bear that people will kill that 
a hell of a lot. Um, so rabbit battery can reconfigure. So it has a benefit of putting it on another creature. So when that creature dies, the rabbit battery comes back down. So that to me is what the replacement for that is in the deck. Um, also in the deck, we have a lot of spells. Now, if you look, there's 17 creatures, which is still quite a lot for Mono Red, but still 24 non-creatures with a CMC average of 1.6. So we only go for 19 lands in this deck, and they're all mountains. I nearly said all forests, but they're all mountains. Uh, if they're all forests, we'd never be able to play a card. Um, but it has a lot of, you know, action. I'm talking like a braid destroying artifacts three damage to target creatures we got lightning strikes for more damage there's play with fire that does more damage as well um ancestral anger can just get bigger uh, more of these in the graveyard and then you draw cards as well so that's a you know sorcery speed so you have to play it so there's a potential that your creature will get killed in response but um it's, it's a really good card and a really sweet one drop if you can get the phoenix down turn one and you know turn two if you've got two in his hand it really is a beater if they haven't got you know the cut down or anything like that for their turn one play and you, you know you're on the you're on the play it really does start putting the damage in uh reckless impulse was one of the Great additions to Mono Red, Exile and Top 2 cards, and to end of turn, you may play those cards. Um, so that is just, you know, end of your next turn, sorry. So playing that in your turn, and then still having, you know, might be able to play one, because we have, like I said, a lot of one drops, a lot of two drops, really low CMC, but potentially the next turn, um, you will be able to play both cards, unless you play and pull two lands, which would be pretty unfortunate. Uh, Sawblade Scamp picks up these all these all counters every time you're playing an on creature spell you can tap it just to do one damage i'd have loved this card if you could tap it and it did damage equal to number of oil counters that'd be really good but it wouldn't be a common card one drop then would it uh, but yeah that was just me making you know making a better card that probably would have been rare and yeah, not one mana. <laughs> this is just my idea. Uh, but yeah, we know what Mono Red is all about. It's a very aggressive. This is more creature-based. Getting the damage in if you can. And then basically finish people off with your lightning strikes, with your play with fires. And, and then just, you know, you can maybe charge or dress to kill plus one damage to one Deja as well. Um, I do like playing Mono. I've been playing it quite a bit on stream at the moment um, as a blue mage. Just to, it's so quick to get some wins. And um, that's if you want to get up the, you know, the meta ladder, this five rare version can get you some wins. But we're now going to go and take a look at the nine rare version. So still with nine rares, it's still very low. Like I said at the start of the video, 25, 30, 40 rares in a lot of best of one decks. This one has a lot of the same cards, but a lot, you know, quite a few different cards as well. Um, so this is playing the Monastery Swiss Spear in there, still has the Phoenix Chick in there. And this one plays Reinforce Ronin instead of, you know, the little battery one that we had before. So this can come down turn one, do two damage, but then it does get returned to your hand and also has channel potentially to draw cards as well. The rares in this are four Thundering Raju, which is a great aggressive creature for four mana. Haze comes down, puts a counter on it, then can deal damage as well. It's really good and really aggressive at your top end. And the other four is Felden Renom Excavator. It is legendary, but it's good. It can't block. It comes down potentially turn two. If you've got turn one Kumano, then this is attacking for three. It's really good because it stays out of cut down um, views and it can't be killed by it, which is, you know, a lot of mono black decks out there. You play that turn one, they play this one, but you know, a lot of times you will then just either potentially lose your Swiss Spear or your Phoenix or whenever you're playing. But if you can have this in your hand turn two, comes down three toughness three power they can't get it and then you're just getting the damage in so it's four for the refunding ratio four for the felden and then there is a mistress foundry now you could take that out quite easily and then play eight but i'm putting these decks out exactly as they are uh what they've been getting their winning percentages with um so this is why this is in the deck but you could drop it for another mountain and save yourself a rare potentially and i don't think it would really affect the win you know ratios too much this plays a different creature as well in electrostatic infantry this is good because there's a lot of little you know, token decks and everything like that you can build this up to be a big trample beater which is another good way to get over the top of those little dwarf decks that are really you know annoying and hard to get over because you're you know pumping up your swiftly makes no difference if they got a one one token from the wedding invitation and you just can't get through but the infantry can get through which is why it's a really really cool card uh, other different card in this deck as well is it plays a two of free from flesh 
instant speed target creature gets plus two two until end of turn and put two oil counters on it i mean that seems like it'd be really good with the scamp the scamp's not in this deck but still to get the plus two two when you've got something like a trampler it could be all you need just to get that final bit of damage through um, so 21 mountains in this and the foundry it is a 1.6 still average 24 creatures in this so a lot more creatures and 14 non-creatures in this deck um, but still been getting slightly higher percentage with this one than the other mono red but you know they're both super consistent and will definitely get you wins on the ladder so we have two decks to go and the next one is a different version of mono blue a lot of the same but it still runs a couple of different cards so it's been updated the list a bit they tend to bring in a couple more counter spells in this deck um scatter ray has come into the fray and this one now counter target artifact or creature spell unless it's controller page four so you know really good against you know some big artifacts that come out and especially in the mono black deck can play um the one double black version that can be plus for seven as well the name absolutely escapes me such a bad youtuber um but yeah this has been added into the fray now as well and it goes relies more you know a lot more on the on sort of counter magic and bounce and stuff like that so like make this appear three or three negate as well um we have like fading hopes is a four of and march is of the swirling mist is a single rareness um that can really um it's really good for tapping stuff down in case you wanted to you know you just phase everything out it's not tapped down but it phases it out and um, you could even potentially protect your creature if you like as well. Flow of Knowledge is in the a mono blue deck now as a two of and why shouldn't it be? Because 20 Islands and one Ottawara, um, that's just going to be a really good card and it really does pull mono blue back into games. So the rares, as I say, four Haughty Gins. The main, you know, the one of the main wing cons of the deck is in there as a four off, and then it has a single march, like I spoke about, and a single blue sun's twilight to gain control of a big creature, which is nice. And it's five or more, you create a token copy. The only other single rare is an Ottawara, which can help bounce stuff as well. Um, so other than that, 20 items. So that's the seven rares in this. It still relies on big beaters in the Haughty Gin, Talarian Terror that can potentially come down early, War 2. Um, I do, it is a very good card for a common card, 5-5 five, five, that can come down so quick and then is harder to kill as well, but can be just blocked by a single little token, which is annoying. But that's why you have cards like Fading Hope in there to bounce those little tokens away and then get through for your wins the card draw is epic in this the flow of knowledge the thirst for discovery we run 20 basic lands so this is a four of is really really good then we have four impulse to look through the deck as well and consider you literally do you know you find your way to your haughty gins and your telerian terrors and that is the way this deck wins it's very annoying to play against because it's it's just really good and consistent it's not unbeatable but the reason it gets a high percentage percentages a lot of the times people will just quit against when you're playing mono blue and it's very hard to play against especially if they've got the perfect you know the really good hand of all the count spells early and then they get the protection and the haughty gins come down and basically they're so big at the start they might need only two hits to win uh, that's what this deck does uh, but mono blue it's going to be there for a while. It's a very good deck and um, yeah I wouldn't blame you for crafting this one and ranking up on the ladder with so the last deck has 12 rares, a mixture of 12 rares and mythics. Um, still very low on the rare count, but you know a bit higher than some of the others that we've showcased today. And this is the enchantment deck that is a very good, very good deck. Uh, first of all, we're going to look at the rares. Now, four of these rares are in the land base as well. So overgrown farmland runs as a three of. If you can put another one in, it won't hurt the deck at all. And then it runs a Besiege you who endures. Some of the decks do run Iganju land as well. So that could be an interesting one to put in there as well because it helps do a little bit of damage. But it wasn't in this list. Uh, Hallowed Haunting is one of the wing cons of the deck if you can get this down and start triggering off all your enchantments uh this just really gets out of hand it runs in there as a two of and you you know you really want to try and get this card 
on there early if you can and then you start plumbing all these little enchantments down it has removal it has creature forming enchantments and they just all start ticking off and they just keep amassing and even if opponent gets rid of them if they haven't got rid of the hallowed there's so many it just keeps going there's 30 enchantments in this deck cmc average is really low as well 2.1 19 creatures 19 non-creatures um, it's just a really good consistent deck that really is quite hard to beat for some of the decks uh, mono red can go early against it but then you get the lifelink of jukai and, and it starts getting a bit out of hand and it's hard for those decks to sort of keep up with the low mana removal like circle of confinement and borrow time and then you've got touch of the spirit realm as well you can just play blockers with spirit companion draw your card and just stop that early damage until you can start to build up a bit of an army so the other rares in the deck is a four of weaver of harmony that is not legendary which is great for the deck and will pump up all your enchantment creatures they will get plus one mine you can start copying target activated or triggered abilities from enchantments hello hello hounting very good we have two cami of trances in there as two of the other rares whenever you cast in charge put a one one counter in, and this can come back from the graveyard it needs to be exiled it just always seems to come back rest of the rares like i said were the lands in this um one of my favorite cards is machiku radio truth you know if you watched a lot of my videos i love this card the plus one and two the law counts one and two target creature gets plus one, one to understand for each artifact and or enchantment if you can then put this on your yukai it's a massive lifelink potential swing that just stops mono reds and the aggro decks because you just get that one big swing where this could be six seven eight nine ten and it's just so much damn more damage that opponents have to do with this deck um, other than that generous visitor is a nice turn one play another creature that can build up um, but will be targeted early then you've got commune with spirits at the one drop looking for the top four finding your enchantments just for one mana you can see why this deck is really good it just has a bit of everything uh, newer card that i've seen put in there which was audacity uh, enchanted creature gets plus two oh and trample really helps against uh, the wedding invitation decks or anything like that uh, when it's put into the graveyard for the battlefield, you get to draw a card as well. So for one mana, this does a lot and is a, a newer addition to the enchantment deck that I've seen. There's also a single Go Shinti, another one with Trample. Getting over those little tokens is what you want to be doing, and this deck can do it. Beginner end state, you may pay one. When you do, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target shrine, and that's your shrine. Um, this is a really good deck, low mana curve, um, plays with 12 rares. You can fit around with the lands if you want to make it a bit more budget if you can, but it will stop the consistency. Putting in more lands will obviously make it better, like an extra overgrown. Um, things that aren't going to come in tap to be good, adding the Aganju, like I said, maybe another Besiege you, um, because, you know, to untap lands is what gets you ahead in some of the games, and um, that's really what sometimes holds budget decks back. But it's the first way, that, you know, the first cards that you always want to update for any of these budget decks, if they need them, is the lands. Uh, but this is a cool deck, and it gets really high win rates, and it gets really good results. Um, so, yeah, if you fancy playing something a bit different, the Selesnia enchantments, give them a go. So there you have it, five more super budget decks, um, meta decks that you can play, hopefully craft, you know, as small as five rares, so it's not going to be a massive layout, and hopefully if you've got some of them, it's going to be even more minimal layout, hopefully you've got some of these cards, and then maybe, maybe you only have to craft a few rares, uh, they all get really good results, so take them to the ladder, um, you know, give them a try if you can, uh, and even if you just want to play Saint, different to what your normal, you know, maybe you've got a deck that's full of heavy rares, but you don't want to put another one because, you know, we like I said, the situation 25, 30, 40 rares for a lot of the decks. These decks, play Saint different, can get you wins, and then it's not so hard on your wallet. And these are great for beginner players, new players that have just come into the game that have been playing maybe for a few, you know, for a little while and want to get a stronger deck. These decks are really good for you as well. If you enjoyed today's video, it really does help support it. I 
know you've been loving the budget videos and um, smashing the likes recently has really helped. If you can leave comments and tell me you've been here to the end, and if you want to go that bit further, you can always check out the Total MTG Patreon. It's a great way to support the channel and all the budget content that I'm putting out. Or there's um, a super thanks. There's a little thanks underneath the video. You can see you can buy me a coffee or something. Uh, but don't feel like you have to. I just always like to put it out there so people know. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching all the videos and all your support. You lot take care and I'll see you on the next video.